Hey there, and welcome back to another Stereo Launch video. Today we're talking about bass guitar. The bass guitar is one of the most important parts of setting the foundation for the recording of a song. It holds down the low end, helps establish the groove and all that stuff, and it's what everything else builds on top of. So we wanna make sure we get excellent bass recordings when we're recording our songs. So today I'm gonna to share with you three tips for how to get excellent bass recordings in your home studio. Alright, so before we jump into the three tips, I'm going to give you a quick bonus tip up front. And this is kind of just a general rule whenever you're recording guitars, bass guitars, or just any instrument really. Make sure the bass is in good working order. What that means is make sure it has a good setup on it. You know, if you got your own bass, make sure you keep good care of it. If you got someone coming in, make sure that, you know, they have their setup well and all that, especially the intonation, because even if you tune your bass with the open strings, right, on the tuner, then if you start playing up here, it's going to get out of tune. And then you're going to be out of tune with the rest of the band. It's going to cause problems. So make sure it's in good working order with good intonation. Also make sure the string height is set up correctly so you don't get a bunch of extra fret buzz and all that stuff because that can be kind of a nightmare to deal with once it comes to editing and mixing. And so just having a bass that's set up well from the beginning is going to make things a whole lot easier later down the road. All right, tip number one is just record the bass direct. So what does recording the bass direct mean? That means we're going to record the direct signal off the bass. So we come out of the output jack on the bass into our tuner because we're gonna make sure we're in tune, come out of the tuner and basically plug straight into the audio interface. If you have an instrument input or one of those combo jacks that accepts an instrument cable, that's where you plug it in and that's what you record. This is done a lot of times in big studios. There's a, maybe a slight variation where they plug into a certain preamp or into the console or whatever. But basically it's the same idea. It's just plugged straight in to the console or the audio interface and you record that without an amp. And recording this way is just gonna give you a good solid bass signal that you can really work with once it comes mix time. And you have a lot of tonal options you can do and make that really sit in the mix well. Now, if you have someone come in, like you have a band, maybe a rock band coming into your studio and the bass player has a bass amp and he says, you know, the bass amp I have is a major part of the sound that I have, right? It's, it's a big part of my sound. And that's a valid point. And that has happened multiple times when I've recorded people. And the good news is we can accommodate that as well and still get the direct bass signal. So the best way to do that is again, out of the bass, tuner, pedal board, whatever. And before going to the actual amp, use what we call a direct box. Now this is kind of a cheap one. There are much better ones out there. This is what I have on hand at the moment. But basically you plug the bass into one of those jacks and the other jack comes out and goes to the amp. And then on the other side you have an output, which is an XLR output on it. And that plugs into your audio interface, just like a microphone and you record the speaker with a microphone and you record that direct out also and now you have two channels of bass one's direct, one's the microphone and now once it comes to mix time you can blend and match those and really get the bass sound you want and also accommodate the bass player's bass sound that he wants as well. So now you have a lot more options to work with and you can stay true to the bass player's tone. Now if you don't have a direct box like this um, a lot of bass amps will have a direct out on the back of it. So you just plug into the bass amp like normal, and then you connect an XLR to the DI output on the back of the head, and you just record the same way. Again, another channel that has the direct and a channel that has the mic speaker, and you're in the same situation. I just typically prefer to have a good DI box to work with. Some of them can sound really good and really kind of enhance the tone a bit, and so... A good DI box is definitely worth having around. Now option three around this is what I typically do. It's kind of a virtual version of doing the DI box. So I will plug direct into my audio interface, just like we talked about in option one. I'll record my bass parts, and then I will duplicate that track, and I'll add like a virtual bass amp on it, or maybe some other plug-in 
uh, to give it a bit of a different tone. So now it's kind of the same thing where I have two tracks again, my regular direct, and now I have a bass amp also. So it's kind of a virtual version of doing the direct box and splitting things out. Tip number two, find your tone. It's always good practice when recording to get the tone you, you're going for at recording time. Don't try to fix it in the mix because 99 times out of 100 is not going to sound as good as if you just got it right at the beginning. Different songs, different genres and styles call for different tones and bass sounds, right? So experiment a little bit with what you have and try to get the tone you're going for. So how can you get different sounds out of a bass? One option is just to have multiple basses on hand and try different basses because they're all going to sound a little different. So that is option one. If you're like me and only have one bass, then you don't really have that as an option. I have a Fender Precision bass and I only have one pickup on here. I know it's split, it looks kind of like two, but it's really just one pickup. A lot of basses have two pickups, so you could switch between the two different pickups see which one's going to work better for your sound, what's going to sit better in the mix, or you can even sometimes blend in between those two. With this bass, I only have one pickup, so that's not really an option, but I still have plenty of options to get all kinds of different tones out of it. So let's explore some of those. First of all, I could always change out the kinds of strings I'm using. I use round wounds on most of the time for my bass parts. They're brighter. You can also get flat wounds. Some bass players prefer those. And they're going to sound not as bright. right? They're going to have a rounder sound as opposed to the round wounds that are going to have a brighter sound. It seems kind of intuitive maybe by the names, but round wounds are brighter, flat wounds are rounder. Anyway, so that's always an option. If you don't want to do strings, because that can kind of get expensive and time consuming or whatever, you have plenty of other options. On this bass, I have my tone knob. I can turn that and change the tone and roll off some of that high end if I want to. That's always an option. I can play at different places, whether I play down here on the strings, it's gonna be brighter. Play up here, it's gonna be smoother and rounder sounding. In the middle, somewhere in the middle. Um, I can play at different places on the neck. I could even use a pick if I wanted to and get a different sound, or play slap and get a different sound. All kinds of options that are gonna sound completely different, that are gonna fit some genres or whatever better than others. So let's take a quick listen to some of those options. So obviously lots of different tones you can get out of it. And this is just one pickup. If you've got two pickups, you can do even more and so forth. And this is a passive bass. If you have an active bass that has, you know, active EQ stuff, you can really tweak and get all kinds of stuff out of that. So tons of options. The point is just make sure you're getting the right tone at the beginning. One thing to keep in mind, I've seen this happen, is bass players think that the bass it's a low note instrument, and so they have to really crank up the bass, like if they're running through the amp, they crank up the bass and roll off the high end in the mid, and it's just all low end. And that tone is gonna get lost inside the mix. You're just not gonna hear it. Our ears hear mid frequencies and high frequencies best, and that's how our ears are gonna distinguish the bass sound from the other sounds within the song, especially on like earbuds or small speakers that don't reproduce that low end. If the bass is nothing but low end, you're not gonna hear it. So on a bass, usually the mids and highs are kinda of what we hear, and the low end is kinda of what we feel. So you wanna make sure you have the full frequency spectrum of the bass. If you're recording direct in to your audio interface, you're probably gonna get that anyways, unless you have some sort of big EQing going on on a pedal or something like that. But if you're plugged in direct like I am right now, you're gonna get that full 
frequency spectrum. Tip number three, play to the kick and snare. The bass guitar very much is a part of the rhythm section of a band. Yes, it has notes kind of like a guitar does and it plays different pitches, but it's really very much a part of the rhythm section. That's where the groove of the song comes from. It's where the foundation comes from. And so the bass, what it's playing should coordinate and work with what the drums are playing and most specifically the kick drum. Now this isn't true in all genres and in all songs, but for any like rock and pop, that's a pretty good general rule. That doesn't mean that the bass is playing exactly what the drums are playing or what the kick drum is playing. It means they're working together and they complement each other. Now with that said, when it comes to recording time, and you're recording your own bass or maybe you have someone else recording bass, make sure that what is being played on the bass is lining up exactly with the feel of the drums. Make sure it's in good time with the drums. Make sure when that kick drum hits, like on one, a lot of times the beginning of a phrase, that kick drum's gonna hit on one. Make sure the bass is lined up with that as well. If you have them go choo -choo, right, like out of time with each other, it's gonna really take out that low end of the song and make it muddy and not solid and not groove and all that stuff. So make sure that the bass is lined up with that. Now, I'm a guitar player, not really a bass player, so my bass technique is not amazing, and sometimes I get a little out of time. Maybe I fall, if I got something harder to play on the bass, it's a bigger stretch because I'm used to smaller stretches, right? If I'm going, I might fall a little bit behind, and that's just when you go in and you punch in and you do a cleaner take, or if you need to edit a little bit, that's not a problem. It's better, in my opinion, to go in and edit and shift the timing around just a little bit to really tighten up that low end um, than to have a bad performance and a bad recording. That's one of the great things about having digital is we can tighten that up. Now, that doesn't mean everything to the grid locked in all the time. I like to keep the feel of the song and all that. And it also doesn't mean I have a really, really bad performance of my bass part and then I go and try to fix everything because that's not gonna sound very good either. Get a really good take, punch in in a few places if you have to, and tighten things up in editing if you have to. But just make sure the bass is locked in with the drum kit. All right, so those are our three tips for getting excellent bass recordings in your home recording studio. If you have any tips or any suggestions that you like to use when you're recording bass, make sure you leave those in the comments down below. Love to hear how you like to record bass. Also, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And make sure you check out my website, StereoLaunch.com, for more articles and videos and all kinds of good stuff there. And if you're recording guitars in addition to bass, and you're like me in a home studio, I have a tube amp, but I can't always crank it up to get those great tube amp sounds with uh, recording traditionally with a microphone and all that because it's like in the evening and my kids are going to bed or maybe you live in an apartment and you have neighbors that don't want to hear a loud cranked amp. Make sure you check out my free guide in the description down below, five ways to record loud guitars without waking the kids or upsetting the neighbors. It just goes through multiple ways that we have today of recording great sounding guitars without a ton of extra noise and bothering everybody else. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.